And now I've had the DJI Osmo Action 4 since the day it came out. And since I'm a man of the people, I can proudly say that it does bring the sauce when it comes to vlog. You just have to set it up right. <laughs> and now since I know y'all a bunch of ninjas and y'all gonna find out the best settings anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and help you guys get there a little bit faster by sharing what I think are the best settings and let you guys go from there. Plus, also share a boss tip that I ain't even know was in the action for. So Pimmin, pull up and let's grab some coffee and make sure you stay until the end. Because my ninjas, if you are planning on using this camera for things other than action, you are gonna wanna know about this secret setting. Oh man, my ninjas, we haven't been up in here in a minute. Uh oh, still cricket. Hold on. And now before we get into these episodes, I do have to say that this video is not sponsored by DJI because they ain't send me nothing. But the video is sponsored by some of you guys, which are Michael Herring, Barb Thomas, and big pimpin' Ron St. Clair. My ninjas, thank you so much for the coffee because it helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to buy me a coffee, don't be shy. The link is down below. But if not, no tea, no shade, because I ain't a hater. Why do I look cricket? Now, the first thing you want to do to get the absolute best settings has to be turn on the camera and make sure it's updated, because Pimp and I did that this morning and there was actually an update. <laughs> so go ahead and turn on the camera, connect it to the DJI Mimo app, and then update if possible. Just make sure that your camera is the most up to date so you can get all the sauce. And now if the camera is updated, you are good to go. Next thing you want to do is go into the settings and go ahead and calibrate the camera. And the reason you're doing this is because if you don't, the camera can do some weird things. Like if you're in horizon balancing, sometimes it'll look sideways. Sometimes you'll also have a drift if you're coming, like if you're coming close to the camera. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and go into video compression. And this is where you're going to choose a codec between H.264 as well as HEVC. And Pimpin, you are going to want to choose HEVC because it is offering the highest bit rate out of the video quality. What's also a plus is that the file styles are a lot smaller, but it does have a downside in which it doesn't work well with like older computers. So if you have an older computer or out of date, yeah, you, you do not want to record in these settings. There ain't no point in recording on a codec that you can't edit. <laughs> And now you're gonna hop out of the settings, swipe up, and you're gonna go to resolutions, where there ain't no reason to be around the bush, just shoot in 4K. I mean, unless you need that like horizon leveling, shoot in 4K. 2023, there's no reason in shooting in 1080p or even 2.7K, there's, there's no reason. And now when it comes to frame rate, that's more of a personal choice. I like to shoot in 4K 30 because when I'm out hugging the block, it just looks better, but a lot of people shoot in 4K 24, so, it just depends on your preference. Now, I will say, if you are planning on slowing down any of your footage, shoot in 4K 60. And now, if you're feeling dangerously and you need some extra slow-mo sauce, then shoot in 4K 120. And not for nothing, the 4K 120 footage looks, it, it looks good. And then lastly, stabilization. Now, Pimpin, you could choose any stabilization you want. All of them are really good. I mainly rock with the regular Rocksteady and it works. Fine. And now once you have your resolution and frame rate all selected and all good, head over to the right where you can click that little dial. And now once you click that dial, go ahead and click on Pro Mode because it is not set to Pro Mode straight out of the box. So click on Pro Mode and then scroll down because we are starting at the bottom. And click on Image Adjustment. Then click on Custom and adjust the sharpness to negative two and then the noise reduction to at least negative one or negative two. I mean, the footage straight out of camera is solid, but it is a bit too sharp. And I'm so happy that DJI included this as an option. So definitely click on sharpness and turn that baby to negative two. My ninjas, you can always sharpen it in post, but if it's too sharp, it's hard to it's hard to fix that look, in my opinion. It's better to just shoot in camera with sharpness to negative two. And now you do have the option of choosing portrait mode, but I just recommend then customize it yourself and turn that sharpness as well as that noise reduction, turn it down. And now after you are done with that setting, go ahead and hop right over to the low light image enhancement and pimping, just turn that off. Like I'm not even gonna lie, turn it off. It does not, to me, it don't work. So yeah, low light image enhancement, turn completely off. Like trust, you will thank me later. I'm definitely attracting a crowd today. All right, say what's up. <laughs> 
And now hop out of there and the next two settings are kinda your choice and your preference, but I will say for the picture profile, to get the best out of it, go ahead and shoot in D-Log M. Hampton color, it only takes a little color grading and it's it's worth it. So if you can, shoot in D-Log M. But if not, don't worry about it, no T, no shade. Go ahead and leave it in the normal picture profile. And then the same with the field of view, shoot in whatever you like. I like to shoot in D-Warp or standard and sometimes wide. But if you like ultra wide, do a hey, do what you gotta do. Because you know I ain't a hater. <laughs> For me, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to D-Log M and then I'm gonna scroll up and this is where it gets a little juicy. Now, for white balance, I leave in auto, but now if you go into exposure, this is where that secret set it in. I mean, at least I ain't know about it. Nobody told me about it. And look, I've watched a ton of reviews and not one person mentioned this was an option. So, in the exposure option, go ahead and I recommend if you're doing like a sit down like this, I recommend shooting in manual. Go ahead and double the shutter speed. So if I'm shooting in 30, the shutter speed should be 60. That way you can get a nice motion blur. But if you are hugging the block and you're out and about, I would leave it on auto. And now when it comes to the ISO, I know this thing could get cranked all the way up, but I highly, I, I highly don't recommend cranking it up. I recommend leaving it to 100 to 400 or 100 to 800. I mean, but again, if you're feeling dangerous, if you're feeling dangerous, pimping, you can go to maybe 64 or 3200. But any, like anything higher, like it ain't pretty. <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and put my ISO at 100 to 800. And now, if you want to make sure, especially when you're out hugging the block, that you're not getting any artifacting. Pimpin, this is where that secret tip comes in because I didn't know that at the top left, you can click on that and now you have a shutter range. And now this is only available in auto shutter, but it is, it, it is good because now you can set the shutter to one over 100 and it could be cranked all the way up to one over eight thousand and the reason for this is you do not want the shutter to be cranking down like you don't want it to go down which it will do automatically if you don't have the auto shutter range set and the reason that the auto shutter might go down is because it might get too dark and that's a way for the camera to let in more light but that also introduces a lot a lot of artifacting as well as ghosting now pimping i don't care what nobody say the ghosting is different from the artifacting. So again, when you're out hugging the block, walking around, put it in auto and click at the top left on the EV comp, leave the EV comp at zero, but click on the top left and go ahead and change the shutter range. And I highly recommend, again, putting this at one over 100 to one over 8,000. Or if you, can, you can also go up, but don't go down. And pimping, again, nobody told me this. I was just on vacation, shooting like crazy, just happened to click it, and you, you could change the shutter range. Like, who knew? And I think that this is the only camera that allows this. And now, my ninjas, you are ready to get out, hug the block, and do some vlogging. Well, my ninjas, that is it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know what you think about my DJI Osmo Action settings and if you have some settings of your own because sharing is caring. Huge shout out to everybody who bought me a coffee. And if you want to buy me a coffee, don't be shy. The link is down below. But if not, no tea, no shade because I ain't a hater. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Okay, now, quick side note, YouTube, what y'all doing, man? Like, why y'all dislabeling my comments? Like, what did I do? Y'all know ninja bosses watch this. Don't make them pull up. <laughs>